Angels and Scholars. Today we're going to talk about parodies. A parody, we hear this word all the time, it gets thrown around. Go on YouTube, you'll find millions of parodies. But what are they? Quick and easy. A parody is a work that mimics the style of another work, an artist or genre in an exaggerated way, usually for comedic effect. Parodies can take many forms, including fiction, poetry, film, visual arts, which does include memes, music videos, all sorts of things. Okay, think about scary movie. It's funny and it's kind of scary. But what's funny about it is that we can see how it's referring to all these other horror movies and into conventions of horror movies. So it's making fun of them. It's playing with the ideas. It's, it's helping us see some silliness. Okay, so that's a parody. Now, some important points to note. It doesn't make sense to call something a parody unless you can say what it parodies. All parodies are mimetic or imitative, meaning they must use an already existing artist, artwork, work of literature, some sort of source material. Okay? It, nothing, it can't be a parody and be original. Parodies make off of something else. And your audience has to know the source material. If you don't know the source material, then the parody fails. Hence why teenagers often look at us adults like we're crazy because we're laughing at something and then we have to go over to YouTube and show you a video from the 1980s or 90s for you to even think about getting what the heck was happening. So your audience has to know it. Parodies don't necessarily have to criticize the thing they are parodying. Sometimes parodies provide a more neutral illumination or comment upon the original thing or they're just playing with the ideas. It's not necessarily to be critical or to mock it. A parody does not have to take in everything of the original source work. It can pick and choose different pieces that it's going to exaggerate, that it's going to mock, that it's going to make fun of, or that it's going to play with. Okay, And often the word spoof is more commonly used in public discourse common conversation. It's the same thing as a parody. Parody just happens to be the academic term for it. Okay, so let's look at an example. On the left is a ring commercial that you will find online. Let's watch it and then we'll talk about it. It began with the forging of the great rings of power. Three were given to the hipsters, fashion-forward, and fairest of all beings. Seven to the blue-collared great builders and craftsmen of the land. And nine, nine rings were gifted to average men who above all else desire financial stability and for you to not touch the thermostat after it's been set. Go to manlybands.com to get your ring of power. So a basic commercial for a ring for men, okay? And for the most part, you can see, okay, they're trying to be kind of funny, whatever. Why are they talking about three different groups? And why are these guys different than these guys? Like, if you don't know the source of this parody, then it's just kind of like, whatever. So now I'm going to show you the source. Pay attention to how it works. Much that once was is lost, for none now live who remember it. It began with the forging of the great rings. Three were given to the elves, immortal wisest and fairest of all beings. Seven to the dwarf lords, great miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls. And nine, nine rings were gifted to the race of men who above all else desire power. For within the
there you go. You've got the first 30 seconds of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Okay, so just a tiny part, like we said. But notice, you've got the three, the six, the nine, different types of men, people getting these rings. And there's a purpose behind them. Okay, now with the commercial, is the purpose to criticize or to say these rings are bad or problematic? No, it just makes it a little more fun, a little more silly, a little more rememberable. Okay, so if you're on the no of the parody, then you get it and it can be a lot of fun. Okay, now not everything that we see is a parody. Let's take a look. He's ringing. Okay. There's a popular show called Lip Sync Battle. And many people would go, oh, well, then those are all parodies. But the reality is many of them are attempting to recreate the show, the, the original piece. They're trying to show respect and, and um, honor that original piece. Okay. So we're gonna watch part of Tay Diggs' performance of the song Vogue, okay? I want you to pay attention to the lighting, the cinematography, even the costuming and the dancing of not just Diggs, but all the people. would say a man in a bustier this has got to be comedic and while yes it is humorous notice he's lip syncing the song faithfully he's doing very choreographed dances and there's certain things that they're doing like black and white cinematography and uh, it's particular dancing and costuming let's look at parts of madonna's original video for this song and pay attention Look at the clothing, notice the similarities. Pay attention to the dancing, notice the similarities. Notice that this exact same song and words that Tay Diggs is lip syncing. So we see the black and white cinematography. We see the choreographed dancing, very similar, including the dancing that puts the hands around her face like Tay Diggs was doing. We even see, see the conical bra that became a very iconic uh, thing associated with Madonna. So we see that Diggs, though he is a little humorous, is paying more homage, more respect to Madonna rather than parodying her. So not everything that's a recreation is a parody. Now, let's look at something that is a parody of this video. If we just look at these cover images, you see the similarities that the artists are already getting into. On the left is performer Chris Mann, and he did a parody dealing with the coronavirus. Let's listen to a little bit of it 
so we can see how it compares and contrasts with Madonna's video. So you see the black and white footage, the actions with the caressing of the face, and definitely the same tune behind it, but notice the words have changed in dealing with the idea of this coronavirus. Now, I want to point out something with the original video again. Notice he, had, man was doing visuals where he was doubling his image for a backup singer. Let's see how it works in Madonna's original video. So we see some more of that dancing that we appreciated with Tay Diggs. But now we see how she's got the backup singers standing back to back, which man recreated by mirror imaging his. So even though he's changed the lyrics and is dealing with things with COVID-19, he's still playing with her images and recreating her video in a small way. This is where we start to see the parody. He's changed the lyrics, but he's still trying to hit at some of these noticeable aspects of her original video, like the dancers, like the coloring, that sort of thing, making it a parody instead of just an homage. So a parody makes fun of another work of art. It mimics something, okay? It may use the tune or the skeleton. It may use only the visuals. It may use both, okay? Um, and it may point out problems with the source material, but if it does, it's just dealing with that piece. It's not a greater social issue. And for a parody, humor is the ultimate goal. This is compared to satire, which you've often studied in school. Okay, satire makes fun of an important topic in order to piss people off enough to demand change. Okay, it's a form of artistic protest. You see it a lot in uh, The Daily Show or Saturday Night Live or even some of your memes, right? The whole point is let's make fun of the situation so people see how bad it is and want to fix it. Now, satire may use parody in the process. But humor isn't the goal of satire. Change is. So parody allows us to just be a little more easygoing. When a work is really forcing you, making you go, oh man, this sucks. That's, we got to change this. Then you know you're no longer dealing with a parody. You're dealing with satire. All right, my angels and scholars, thank you for this. This week, you're going to be looking at a lot of different parodies and coming to understand how they're parodies. And you want to be able to do that because you're going to have to make your own. All right. Adios. Au revoir. Avida Zane. Jing Jong Jay. Y'all come back now.